Welcome to this short video tutorial of the TradingView platform. Uh, we would like to introduce a new function that has been uh, integrated into the TradingView platform. Uh, now TradingView uh, has a DOM feature also known as Depth of Market. Uh, some of you may, may know it as Price Ladder, Matrix, Level 2 Data. Uh, this was not a function that was available with the prior release of TradingView. Uh, we are now excited to let you know that it is available. However, it is only available on a paid subscription version of TradingView. Uh, there are multiple versions of TradingView, whether you're using a pro version or whether you're using the AMP exclusive free version, which does not include the DOM function. So uh, the particular demonstration today is going to show you a paid subscription version of TradingView, uh, which will allow you access to the DOM feature. All right, so let's get right into it. Uh, as you can see right now, uh, this is a chart that I have open for the September mini S&P contract. Uh, hopefully by now you already have logged into your TradingView platform. You already have a subscription with TradingView and therefore you will have the ability to access the platform. Uh, so hopefully also you have an understanding of how to create a chart. Um, if not, here's a quick demonstration. Pretty much when you log into TradingView, you'll have a workspace created and uh, you have a chart displayed as you can see here. And on the top left corner, you'll notice that there's a little dialog search box where you can type in a symbol of choice and simply find the symbol that you'd like to create a chart for. All right, so for example, um, if I just wanted to pull up an ES chart, I would just simply type in ES in the search field box. And what will happen is it will auto-populate the results of the instrument that is uh, located within the TradingView software. So uh, let me go ahead and do that real quick. <clears throat> I'm going to type in ES, which is the symbol for this, the mini S&P. We're going to go ahead and select the instrument. And then when we do that, we now want to make sure that we select the proper contract month and expiry. So in this case, the current front contract month is September 2016. So we're going to go ahead and left click. And I already had the chart created. Uh, so this is just a demonstration assuming that you don't have a, car, a chart created. Uh, but you would do that exact demonstration in, in order for you to add the symbol onto the chart. Another thing as well, if you have, let's say, a watch list created on the right side panel of your chart, this is the watch list tab here. This will then collapse. This is what we call a watch list. Basically, just gives you the ability to look at uh, a list of symbols, different symbols. And the, the, thing I, the thing that I do like about the watch list is you can just simply click on an instrument within the watch list, and it will easily change the chart to that symbol. So uh, that's a bad example. That's a stock index or a better, better currency share. I'm going to go back to the September mini S&P for now, which is an active futures market. All right, so let's get right into showing you the DOM feature. So I'm going to go ahead and just minimize the watch list. And the first thing that you want to look for is on the top right corner of the chart, there are two arrows. There's one pointing up, one pointing down. And if you take your mouse cursor and hover it over that icon, uh, it will display DOM, which stands for depth of market. So you're just going to simply left click to enable DOM function and now you can see it's displayed within your workspace. All right, so let's go over a couple things that we see here. It's pretty straightforward. This is this is a new function, so uh, there's not a, a whole lot of flexibility just yet, uh, but I would imagine moving forward in the future that TradingView is going to be very proactive in adding additional functions to this particular dome. Uh, so definitely excited to see uh, what the future holds for the TradingView platform. Uh, first thing first, on, on the top here you can see this is the order quantity, so how many contracts do you want to buy or sell? You can either use the up and down keys to change the quantity or just simply type in the value with your keyboard. Uh, this right here is basically your position display. So uh, right now I'm currently flat. Uh, if you were long, it would show you have a long position, of course. If you were short, it would show you have a short position. This is your open profit and loss display. So once you're in a trade, uh, your profit and loss P&L will populate and accumulate and it will just start to interchange as the market moves, either against you or in your favor. So that's where you would look to see what your profit and loss is. And then, of course, you have the actual DOM itself, where you have the buy column, you have the sell column, and then you have the middle price column, which will represent the market that you're trading. All right, so to identify the last trade price, it's going to be simply represented by the shaded price. So in this case, you can see 21.64 even. Uh, it's about 6.30 p.m. here California time, so there's not a whole lot of activity at, during this uh, time of day, uh, not a whole much of liquidity, but enough to demonstrate at least uh, what we need to do in this video. And then you have your bid column and you have your offer column. What's nice is uh, you do have 10 levels on each side, 
So you can see one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, and you also have ten levels deep on the offer side as well. And also, what's pretty cool as well is that it actually shows you a little histogram of volume at each price level. So you can see that if you look here, there's about forty contracts that are being offered at the bid at twenty-one sixty-four, now thirty-nine. You see that little histogram chart there. You can see it moving back and forth as those values change, which is kind of cool. I, I haven't seen that on too many domes. Uh, if you notice here, there's 220 orders working at 2162 and a quarter. So therefore, you can see uh, the histogram is much larger and showing a much larger display. So uh, that's kind of cool that you'll see those the little measurements interchange as the values change, either whether they're decreasing or increasing. You'll either see that shaded blue or shaded pink either decrease or increase based on what the values are there. So uh, that's pretty cool. And then on the bottom here, you can see that there's these quick buttons here. So this one here will cancel all working buy orders. Uh, this is just simply scrolling up and down on the dome itself. So if you just click the up arrow, it just allows you to scroll up and down. Pretty straightforward. This, it, what happens is if the market starts to trade and the dome gets a little off center, then you just want to simply hit this button here, center view, and that's going to simply recenter the dome. Simple as that. So I'll just go ahead and do it. Uh, there's a quick recenter. Uh, you can also use your middle mouse scroll on your mouse if you want to scroll down. Just basically scroll down on your middle mouse scroll. If you want to scroll up, simply scroll up. Pretty straightforward. Again, just hit the uh, center button here to center the dome. And uh, that's, there you go. And then and this is basically scrolling down. And then this is going to cancel all working sell orders. All right. So do not confuse that, however, with liquidating trades. Uh, a lot of times, uh, canceling sell orders, canceling buy orders, customers may get that confused and thinking that it also closes out positions. Uh, definitely not the case. It's only going to cancel working orders that are looking to get filled uh, but have not been filled just yet. And uh, that's pretty much what these quick buttons represent. And then you have these quick buttons here. So that's pretty self-explanatory. You're either going to buy at the current market price by clicking the buy market button or simply sell at the current market price by simply clicking the sell market button. And you can see that, that it's very easy to, to identify which ones buy and sell by the color code, uh, which buys are blue and sell is pink. And then you have at the bottom time and force. You have currently two options, whether you're using a day order or good till cancel. Day orders represent that if the order is not filled by the time the market closes, the order is considered unable and therefore automatically canceled by the exchange. Good till cancel, GTC, basically the order will work until you actually cancel the order and will continue to work through the close of the day. So uh, that's ideal if, you know, if you're a swing trader and you want a stop to work uh, through the close. And then you have three other buttons. You have flatten, cancel all, and reverse. All right, so the flatten button is where you want to, uh, the button that you want to use if you want to liquidate your position and simultaneously cancel all working orders. All right, so that's the button that you want to use. If Think of it as your bail button. I need to get out of the position right now and cancel working orders at the same exact time with a single click. The flatten button is what you're going to want to use. Cancel all will represent canceling all working orders regardless if they're buys or sells. All right, so if they're pretty much, it's going to cancel buys and sells. All right, so these buttons here were just basically focusing on just one side, whether there were buys or whether they were sells. But this button, cancel all, will cancel all working orders, uh, whether they're buys or sells. All right, so the reverse button pretty much is going to reverse your position at the current market price. And by the way, the flatten and reverse functions are market orders, so they are not limit orders. Uh, therefore, whatever the market's trading at, uh, you will be executed at that price. That means that you do have the probability of getting slippage. Uh, reverse, basically, if you have a long position, let's say you're long one contract, if you hit the reverse button, it will simply sell two contracts at the current market price and leave you net short one, uh, which basically is the reverse position of long one. So that's pretty much what reverse does. And just kind of wanted to go over that. That's pretty much the overview of terms of the display of the dome. And now let's show you how to place some trades off the dome directly. So uh, let's go ahead and place a simple buy limit all right, so the first thing you're going to want to do is identify is what kind of order do you want to place? Do you want to place a, a buy limit? Do you want to place a sell stop or whatever the case may be? So what we're going to do is we're going to simply place a buy limit, let's say at 21.61 even. All right, so market's trading at 21.64.75 as you can see. So I'm going to take my mouse cursor and I'm going to click in the buy column at 21.61 even. All right, so that's going to allow me to place a buy limit at 2161. You can see that when you hover your mouse cursor over the cell, the cell at 2161, that box will highlight blue, which is giving you an indication that you're now hovered over that particular cell. And then the next step is just simply left-clicking to place the order. 
All right, so we're going to go ahead and do that. We already have our quantity set. There's our confirmation, as you can see here. So this is a definitely highly recommend going over the information, making sure that everything's correct. Uh, you have what the transaction, whether it's a buy or sell, uh, what order type is being used, whether it's a market limit stop or stop limit. In this case, we're placing a limit order. Now you have the limit price, which is 2161. And then you also have what the time in force, whether it's a day order or a good till cancel order. So we're just going to keep it as a simple day order. This right here will be a representation of what the current offer and bid is, or better yet, the bid and offer. So 64 half by 64.75. And then this is the quantity. And uh, we don't, we're not using a stop at the moment, so that's why this is blank. Now we're going to simply hit the buy button once we can verify that all the information is correct. So we'll go ahead and click the buy button now. And let's just make sure that we're placing the order on the right side of the market, which we are. Hit buy. All right, and now you can see the order is working. So then on the left side of the buy column, you can see there's a visible column that's showing a little X, uh, which is represented, uh, if you hit that X, it actually cancels the order out. And also to the left here is a little pop-up notification letting you know that the order has been placed. If you look within your trade panel within TradingView, you can also see the orders tab will also display the working order, which you can see visible. And uh, if I go back to the account summary, uh, this will just simply allow me to see my account balance and so forth. But going back to the dome, you can see now that the order is working. There's a quantity of one, and there's the, lit, the order type, which is a limit order. So that's how you know the order is working. And also, too, if you notice, if you look on the chart, everything is in sync on the chart as well, which is cool because the original way of placing trades off TradingView was you can only place trades directly off the chart. Uh, now that the DOM function has been enabled within TradingView, uh, you can see that the dome and the chart is in sync, which is showing the visible working order. So let me first show you how to modify the order directly off the DOM. Once you have the order placed, as I've done, you're just going to simply take your mouse cursor and point it over the order that you see visibly working. Hold down your left click and just simply drag the order while holding down your left click to the new amended price that you want to change it to. All right, so let's say uh, I'm going to scroll the dome down just a bit. And I would like to move the order, let's say, from 2161 down to 2160 even. So I'm going to take my mouse cursor. I'm going to point it over the one, hold down the left click, and simply drag it down. And notice there's a transparent shaded cell that's letting you know that you now have that order grabbed. And if you even notice the, uh, the hand icon, it, it almost shows a display of the hand now grabbing the actual order. So now you can see at 2160, my mouse cursor has hovered over that particular cell level. I'm going to release the left click, and there's the modification confirmation. Are you sure you want to move the order from 61 to 60 even? Yes, we're going to hit modify, and now you can see the order has been placed and changed at 2160, and there is your confirmation letting you know that the order has been modified. All right, so that's basically how you place an order onto the actual dome and therefore modify it by a simple left click, drag and drop, and now you can see the order is working at 2160. All right, so pretty straightforward. To cancel the order, you're just going to simply hit the X, and it will get a confirmation. Do you sure you want to cancel this order? We're going to hit yes, and now you can see the order has been placed. All right, so that's pretty much a basic example of how to place trades onto the dome function there. Uh, here's an example on the sell side. So let's say if I want to place, uh, let's say a sell stop at 2161 even. All right, so in this case, this is a, an opposite transaction as well as an opposite order type. So we're not placing a limit order this time. We're now placing a sell stop. So again, same concept. You're just going to navigate your mouse into the sell column this time. And notice that the red uh, box now is not red. and It's red instead of blue because you can see that blue represents a buy. And now here, you can see on this side, it represents red, which means that we're going to place a sell transaction. All right, so now I'm going to go ahead and place, let's say, a sell stop at 2160 even. So I'm going to simply left click. And the cool thing about the TradingView Dome, and this, I'm always a big fan of this particular function, is the Auto Detect function. Uh, for those of you that have been trading for a while, you probably have an understanding that uh, only certain order types can be placed on, this, on certain sides of the market. So, for example, a sell stop can only be placed below the market price. Uh, you cannot place a sell stop above the market price. It's impossible. If you do, and the order goes through, what it does, it just executes you at the current market price, which is not what you want to do. So, in this case, You've noticed I didn't have to select stop. I didn't have to select limit. Um, I'm just simply clicking in the cell on the proper side, whether it's a buy or sell. And TradingView automatically recognizes the order type. That's a valid order type that could be placed where I clicked. So in this case, I was able to place 
at uh, sell at 2160 and automatically recognize it's a stop order. And now all I need to do is just hit the sell button to confirm the order to actually execute and place it. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. Let's make sure everything's correct. Symbol, of course, is correct. Transaction is a sell, stop, 2160, which is correct. Market's at 64 half, and it's going to be a day order. Hit the sell button, and now you can see the sell order is working. All right, so same concept. You're just going to simply left-click, drag, and drop if you want to modify the order. You're looking for that transparent sell shaded background, which is indicating that you have a hold of the order while holding down your left click, and now just simply release your left click on the cell parallel to the price that you want to modify it to. So in this case, 2159. All right, there's a modification confirmation. Yes, modify, and now the order has been modified. All right, so very easy, very simple to do. Now here's a cool thing I want to show you is, as I mentioned, the dome is in sync with the chart traders. So you can see that as you're placing trades, you can see that the order is represented on the chart as well. Of course, if you're, you know, as long as you're looking at the same symbol on both the dome and the chart, which we are. All right, so not only do you have the ability to cancel and place and modify orders directly off the dome, but you can do it directly off the chart. So if you want to get, uh, for example, if I want to move the sell stop from 2159 down to 2156, I'm just going to hold down the left click over the sell stop and just simply drag it down. So it's a little different with the chart trader. It doesn't show a transparent uh, shaded cell. You can actually see the sell stop moving. Uh, but I have not released the left click, and how I know that is because if you look at the hand icon, it's still grabbing the order. Now I'm just going to simply release my left click over 2155. There's the modification. Make sure everything's correct. Looks good. We're going to hit the modify button, and now the order has been changed. All right, so it's as simple as that. Same procedure. It's a left click, drag and drop while holding down your left click to modify the order. And of course, if you want to cancel the order, you'll simply hit the X to cancel the order directly on the chart. Are you sure you want to cancel the order? Yes. Now the order is canceled. All right, and that's pretty much a quick introduction to the dome function on the TradingView software. One last thing that I want to point out before we sign off, if you're not a fan of the confirmations and you would like to disable them, so therefore you don't want to be asked a second time, are you sure you want to place this order? Are you sure you want to cancel this order? Are you sure you want to modify this order? You would rather get everything done with a single click without a second confirmation. In order for you to disable the confirmations, just go ahead and click this little gear icon uh, within your trade panel. It should be to the right of your user ID or account number of the, the credentials that you're using to log into TradingView. It's a, it'll, you can see right here the little gear icon. If you click it, you'll see this option trading properties. I'll go ahead and select it. Then you're going to click on the trading tab, which it automatically defaults to. And then you'll see the checkbox require order confirmation. Simply uncheck, click OK. And now when you go to place a trade, so let's say uh, right now market's currently, let me, let me recenter the dome for a second. All right, I'm going to scroll down just a bit. Market's trading at 21.64 half. Let's just place a buy limit at 21.60. So you can see there's the, the blue, ch uh, blue cell at 21.60, left click. And now you can see that the order went in immediately and there was no confirmation. All right, so same thing applies if you modify the order. Here's a left click, drag. There's the transparent cell, release. There was, no modification, there was no confirmation. So basically, it, it's not asking me a second time, do I want to perform the action? Here's the same, the same uh, result if I cancel the order as well. And that's it. So if you have any questions about this, feel free to contact our 24-hour support team at AMP Futures. We're available at 312-893-6400, extension 1. That transfers you directly to our help desk. And definitely stay up to date on our YouTube channel. We're very proactive in keeping you up to date on new products as well as new features, such as the dome function within TradingView. Uh, we definitely appreciate your support, and feel free to subscribe. You can always go to www.youtube.com forward slash AMP Futures. Again, that's www.youtube.com forward slash AMP Futures. Thank you for listening in and happy trading.